Hello, I'm your superhero critic, and I realize this episode is kind of late, but life did not give me lemons, it gave me time restrictions. That being said, two weeks ago, I posted a poll on what Power Rangers spinoffs y'all wanted to have me tackle, and of course... Masked Rider was the winner. Masked Rider was one of many Saban spin-off shows done to try to recapture the success of Power Rangers and adapted from the show Kamen Rider Black RX and the films Kamen Rider Z.O. and Kamen Rider J. The series lasted a total of two seasons running for 40 episodes and was the only spin-off show to actually start on Power Rangers being a part of the three-part episode of Friend in Need and even has a one-shot comic book that I will eventually get to in the end of the year featuring the Rangers done by Marvel themselves. So without further ado, let's dive into the first two episodes of Masked Rider Escape from Edenoi. Right off the bat, the show's intro tells us everything we need to know. On a distant and embattled planet called Edenoi, a young prince named Dex is given great powers by his grandfather, the king and is sent to the planet Earth to protect it from the advancing evil of Count Dragon and his vicious insectoids. Once on Earth, he is adopted by a kind family and learns to live as a human. With his companion Furbus by his side, Dex is ever vigilant, ready at a moment's notice to call on his powers to become Masked Rider. Spoilers intro, come on! Thanks for ruining the whole show for me. We begin in space as Lord Dragon's men demand their slaves to continue mining the poisonous gas. You there, put some backbone into your work or you'll feel my lance. Understood. Won't mining kill me though? Yes, but you're a slave, so no one's gonna care anyway. I'll care! Megan is told Prince Dex and his rebels are picking up power, which of course he doesn't like. Furbus, Dex's little buddy, then gives away their position. Dex! What? Oh, oh! Destroy the rebels! That thing looks like fucking Howard the Duck had a sex with an Ewok and they added Alf's jizz just to give good measure on it. Please fucking kill it. Rebels give chase while Dragon's men on horses ride after them, shooting lasers and eventually burying Furbus under the rocks. So much for him! Let's find the others! No, you go back! You go back, check that rubble, and make sure that fucking abomination is dead! You fucking fail at your job! Dragon is happy his men found Dex, but unfortunately, they suffer from ring race syndrome. Where'd they go? Everybody keep down. Thunderhead! How could you lose them? They're right in front of you! Count Dragon will make runs out of us all! Keep looking! Look around the rock! Our villain is informed that his ship is close to Earth, so he sends down one of his bug robots, the Destructosphere. The 90s, the 80s called it. They want their Giver back. We head to the main human's house and we see how diverse the cast is, which is always a plus. The household are trying to pack up for an event. When the father comes in talking about the crash How landing, can you say that? We then go to ditch the comic or did she not steal the wig from me in the school play? And now the Bobby Brigworth got his eye character. on her and he's mad. <laughs> Look, just do what I tell you or I won't. I won't let you take me to the movies. That girl is more controlling than Monica. X talks to his grandfather about Dragon's men beginning to diminish. X is then told about Dragon's plans to get more of an army from Earth, and he's given Earth clothing and teleported towards Earth, crash landing into our family's backyard, causing some slapstick. X 
actually meets the family. Standing in my petunias! My apologies. Oh, my poor flower! You have a crater in your yard. Someone is standing in the crater. And the only thing that you are concerned about is the fact that your flowers have been destroyed. Priorities, woman! Of course, Dex is honest about who he is, but they believe it's all a lie or a joke. It is now time for some orange juice. Oh. 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 Someone give the boy a fucking glass. That is not how you drink orange juice. He's asking questions, so to end all of the questions, Dex just shows them the proof via Mind TV. The kids help Dex get settled in, and they tell him he needs to learn how to not talk so well by watching TV. As you know, using proper English is, you know, bad for you. You have to speak with Lebonics. Dex gets a feeling something is wrong, or something is about to join them on Earth. Glad to see you. <gasps> but what are you doing following me? Are you okay? Uh -huh. God damn it, this ugly f fucking thing again. I thought we were done with this. Fucking kill that thing with fire! The Structosphere is officially fully charged and begins attacking the city, so Dex morphs and heads off to battle, ending episode 1, with the second episode starting with even more destruction. His minions do the typical pre-villain celebration as the kids do their best to hide our furry. <laughs> Future football! Mass Rider begins his fight with the Structosphere, and it isn't long before he quickly destroys him. At the school, all of the adults have a meeting to discuss what to do, where Furbus once again shows up and leads the kids to an injured ex who tells them he needs to think alone. I don't like today's. Maybe the end of me. I summon the Gandalf the alien. Dex's grandfather gives him the advice he needs as he mentally breaks the side of a mountain. Nefaria then sends a group of the show's minions, known as maggots, down, causing mass hysteria within the school. Dex then uses his powers to create a motorcycle and car out of bugs that apparently can freaking talk! Feel free to check out the merchandise, Dex. First we get an annoying ass Furby. Now we have to deal with Christine? God, this show is freaking weird. Dex morphs and heads to the school, all while Furby starts a freaking food fight with the maggot. This isn't funny! Our hero quickly takes out all of the maggots through slapstick combat, and the humans all thank him for his help. Thank you yet. I am a friend, and no thanks are needed, ma'am. What a polite bug. As opposed to being a butthole beetle. Nefaria seems to be the only villain with a brain, as she suggests sending an army of bugs, which our villain chooses to ignore, is sending just one named Beetletron to take down Chopper. While Dex fights, the car Magnum eventually saves the day. Leave it to Christine to save the day. X then delivers the final blow with his Electro Saber. That's one less foul creature to spread Count Dragon's evil. Our villain is of course pissed off that he loses, Dex thinks his feocular friends, and our show ends with the Stuart family accepting Dex as a new part of their family. This show is nowhere near as good as Power Rangers, which is why I can tell that it only lasted the couple of seasons that it did. 
one of the biggest issues, in my opinion, is that it was way too comedic when it tried to be serious. So that is probably why it had a downfall. That being said, I do want to thank everybody who helped pick this review. I will do future poll views in the future. And I will do Patreon picked reviews as well. So if you want to help this channel grow, please head over to my Patreon page, which is linked below. And that being said, join me next week when we head to Mars with a couple of biker mice. I'm your superhero critic, and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome. Master.